In this video we're going to be dividing radicals and talking about how to simplify when we try and divide. So just like in the last video we had a product property of radicals, uh, we also have a quotient property, so something we can use when dividing radicals. So if I have two numbers being divided under one radical, the quotient property says that we can rewrite this with each of those numbers having their own radical. So the square root of a over the square root of b. Now sometimes you may start with something that looks like this and you're always allowed to go back and rewrite it in this form if that helps you simplify. A lot of the problems you'll see today, um, all you need to do is play with this property and you'll be able to easily simplify a lot of these radicals. Um, if this property doesn't help us simplify, we have this trick called rationalizing. But we'll get to that in a little bit here. Let's practice with some rational quotients, just to get the hang of it. Let's say we had the square root of one-fourth. So as a fraction by itself, we can't simplify this any farther. <clears throat> but if we use that quotient property, and break this up into the square root of 1 over the square root of 4. Now all of a sudden we're allowed to simplify a little bit easier here. The square root of 1 is 1. Sorry, 1. 1 times 1 is 1, so the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4, well what number multiplied by itself is 4? That's 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So the square root of 4 is 2. So actually the square root of one-fourth is just one-half. So changing its form helped us simplify that one. Let's try another one here. If I have the square root of 32 halves. Well if I break this up, same way I did on the last one, I don't get any farther. I can't simplify that. However, if I leave it as it is, as a fraction under one radical, and simplify this first, then we can move forward in our simplifying here. So 32 divided by 2 can be simplified. That ends up being 16. 32 divided by 2 is 16. And we can take the square root of 16. 16 is a perfect square. Um, if you don't know that, you could factor it into 4 times 4. Hopefully recognize that this is our perfect square right there. Two numbers multiplied, being the same number. So 4 ends up being our answer. So two examples. One example where breaking it up or changing its form allows us to simplify farther. Um, and another example where breaking it up would not help. We want to keep it as a fraction under one radical and simplify in that way. So there's some rational quotients. Let's get to the irrational quotients right now. Remember that irrational means we're going to be left with a radical in our answer. We're never going to get rid of it. Uh, let's do one right here. The square root of 5 thirds. So leaving it in this form doesn't help us simplify. 5 over 3 can't go any lower there. If I break it up, square root of 5, well that doesn't simplify. Over the square root of 3, well that doesn't simplify. So if we get to a point where changing the form, neither of these forms help us simplify, we have to do this trick called rationalizing. So let's define rationalizing here. So rationalize if, if the quotient property doesn't help. doesn't help but always check that first because oftentimes it will we have to rationalize rationalizing is used to get rid of the radical get rid of the radical in the denominator position we can't leave denominator we can't leave a radical in the denominator that's not simplified it's just not allowed. So, rationalizing is a trick position that helps us get rid of that denominator or the radical in the denominator. We have to think back 
Um, how did we get rid of a square root in our last video? Well, we squared it. And so if we use that trick, we can use it to do this thing called rationalizing. So if I multiply the denominator by itself, if I square it, then I can get rid of that radical. But we can never do something to the denominator without doing it to the numerator. We have to do it to top and bottom. So multiply top and bottom by the same thing, the square root of 3. I'm squaring the square root of 3, so that just leaves 3. And we got rid of the radical. But what we have on top now is we have our product rule. If I have two numbers being multiplied under a radical, I'm allowed to stick them under the same radical and multiply. So 5 times 3 under one radical will give me 15. So I end up with the square root of 15 over 3. And that's referred to as simplified because 5 and 3 are prime numbers. So I can't simplify the square root of 15 anymore. And I don't have a radical in the denominator position anymore. So that's called simplified. Let's move on to another example here. If I have the square root of 16 over the square root of 3. Let's see, let's just experiment for a sec. If I didn't know anything about the square root of 16 and I said I want to use my quotient rule and I want to put 16 over 3 under one radical, well I should realize at that point that that is not going to work. 16 divided by 3 cannot be simplified. So let's go back to how it was written at the beginning, each of them having their own radical. Can I simplify? Well, hopefully, at this point, you realize that the square root of 16 is 4. And so we can simplify the top to just 4. The square root of 16 is 4. But we still have that square root of 3 on the bottom. So again, got to use our rationalizing trick here. Square the bottom. Multiply it by itself. Square root of 3 over the square root of 3. That leaves me with 3 on the bottom. And... Here's where we get something new here. If I have a number under a radical being multiplied by a number without a radical, I cannot multiply them together necessarily. All I can do is stick them together. And that just means that they're being multiplied after we simplify. Well, square root of 3 is just a decimal, so if we multiply that decimal by 4, we could get another answer in a different form, a decimal form. But I want to leave it in radical form. So again, we cannot multiply things without a radical by things with a radical. Um, the numbers without a radical just get stuck on the front. And the number under the radical stays. We cannot simplify this fraction here, this 4 thirds. Sometimes you may, we'll, I think we'll see an example where we have to. Um, but in this particular example, we can't simplify that fraction. We can't do anything with anything else, so this is our final answer here. 4 times the square root of 3 over 3, or 4 thirds times the square root of 3. Alright, let's do another example. Let's do the square root of 3 at 24 ths. So, as it is right now, 3 over 24, can we reduce it? Well, sure we can. If we divide top and bottom by 3, then we end up getting 1 8 and so if we try and take the square root of 1 8 well in this form we can't do anything with it so let's try and break it up here square root of 1 over the square root of 8 well square root of 1 like we said earlier is just 1 but the square root of 8 we can't really do anything with we could take a square out um, remember that 8 is 4 times 2 and we could take the square root of 4 out so let's, let's just try that. If we factor this, it's 4 times 2, and we'll take the square root of 4 out in the front, so that's 2 on the front, and we still have the square root of 2 left over. Well, we still have a radical in the denominator position. So how do we get rid of it? We multiply by the square root of 2. And when we multiply the bottom, we get rid of that radical. But now we have on the bottom, we have 2, which was in front originally, times the 2 that we now get by squaring these. So we have 2 times 2 on the bottom, all over 
1 times the square root of 2, which is just the square root of 2. Anything times 1 is itself. So that leaves a 4 on the bottom and a square root of 2 on top. And that's our final answer. Now, there's another way that we could have thought about that. If I had not simplified first. So let's go back to this step right here. 1 over the square root of 8. Another way to think about rationalizing is to create perfect squares. And perfect squares are any of our numbers. Uh, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on. If we can make the bottom one of those numbers and take a perfect square out, then we can get rid of the radical as well. So let's try that. Which of those numbers? 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on. Which of those numbers can we get 8 to make here? What can I multiply to 8 to create one of those numbers? Well, 4 is kind of tricky to create. Um, 9 is not very possible. What else? 16. If I multiply by the square root of 2, because in order to multiply things with radicals, we got to multiply them with another thing with a radical. So if I multiply by the square root of 2, I get the square root of 16, and that's a perfect square. On top, we still have the square root of 2. The square root of 2 times 1 is just the square root of 2. And so we take out the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is 4, and we're still left with the square root of 2 on top. And we get the same answer. So math with radicals is kind of tricky in that there's definitely not one way to go. There are many different roads we could take, um, and you're always just trying to do the easiest and it just takes practice to see these, see all the tricks that we can do. So let's practice some more here. Uh, so take a look here. Is it easier to keep this as is or to put them under one radical? Well, ask yourself, can we take the square root of 36? Yes. Can we take the square root of 9? Yes. So we could just take the square root of 36, which is 6, on top. Square root of 9, which is 3 on the bottom, and then simplify. 6 divided by 3 is 3. Sorry, it's not 3. That's silly. 3 times 3 is 9. 6 divided by 3 is 2. But this is a special case here where we could actually put them under one radical. 36 divided by 9 ends up being 4, so we have the square root of 4, which is 2. So either direction there would have worked. So again, not just one way to do these. Let's try another one here. Square root of 4 over the square root of 3. Well, this is a fraction here, can't be reduced, so let's use our quotient rule here, break them up. Well, we can take the square root of 4, that's 2. But we still have the square root of 3 on the bottom. we got to use our rationalizing trick. Multiply top and bottom by, by whatever the denominator is. So the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 3 squared, which just leaves 3. And on top, we have 2 times the square root of 3. Again, we can't multiply these together. All we can do is stick them together. So that's all we get there. One more example real quick. 12 over 15, we can't simplify that. We've got to break it up into two different radicals here, the square root of 12 over the square root of 5. We can simplify the top first. 12 is 4 times 3. Take out the square root of 4, put it in the front. We get 2 times the square root of 3 on top. We still have the square root of 5, square root of 5. So we've got to get rid of that radical in the denominator. Let's multiply top and bottom by the square root of 5. So on the bottom, we just get 5. Squaring a square root undoes itself. And here, we can't multiply 2 by anything, so 2 stays on the front. But we have two numbers under it, the same radical. So we can multiply those. And we get 15 under the radical, 2 in the front. It's all over 5. We can't simplify this fraction anymore. So this ends up being our final answer. All right, good luck simplifying quotients of radicals.